So before laying up the part, I made a sample of the laminate just in the nose to get a sense of how stiff the compound curves would make two layers of 200 gram carbon. Thought maybe stiff enough. Once that was done, I put the little bit of Teflon around that corner. Um, I wished we had had enough Teflon to do the whole thing, but I didn't and didn't have the time to wait to order more. So that's why we're using wax here. Surface finish would have been a lot nicer and there would have been fewer pinholes um, if I managed to have enough Teflon on hand to make this work. But I'm putting one last coat of that uh, Rexco High Temp wax, really rubbing it in, and then moving on to prep the core. And engineering gave me this sweet drawing. And so I cut the core. This is five millimeter Gurit Corsell um, M80 which is about five pound foam and has perforations in it uh, every 50 millimeters that came from the factory. And the bit around the nose was thermoformed um, the quick and dirty way here and I tidied up all of the edges with a two to one uh, taper. And from there started preparing the process materials for vacuum bagging. Here is the breather with P3 release film getting spray glued to one side of it. This is a nice way to do that. And then preparing the peel ply, uh, just making a neat kit of that. And this is just regular nylon peel ply and a pretty dull pair of scissors. Um, it's nice to have all of this kitted so that it's easy to go on and makes the bagging uh, smooth operation. And I'm doing the sealant tape on the bag, which is a great thing to do for any bag that's you're either doing by yourself or where you're in a hurry. It's a nice way to solve a problem early on. And now we're going to finally get to cutting some carbon. Having the carbon laid in the mold like this, just gentle, just taped around the edges, I start in the middle with some 5 to 1 mix uh, West System resin. Uh, this is a room temperature cure, very basic um, epoxy. And work from the middle with the squeegee very gently, wetting out the material and sticking it to the mold. Try and keep the fiber smooth and not let there get to be any, any wrinkles or skewed fiber. Uh, and I'm working the back panel by itself. Um, before moving on to the front end of it. And I worked the epoxy up the side with the squeegee, uh, tacking the material down to the mold as I go. And this is probably um, enough resin, and but I'm really making an effort to limit how much resin I use. Um, this is a pretty basic process here, but you can get decent results compared to more expensive processes um, by being careful to limit the resin you use. Um, and again, it helps that this is a very simple laminate schedule and a simple shape. So it takes a while. Um, I think I'm using slow resin here um, just because it's a, a good hour of layup. And it gets more complicated up in the nose part of the vehicle shell um, where we have compound curves. And after I get all the simple part tacked down, I'll work up there tailoring the, uh, the nose so that it comes together sort of neatly. Um, I end up wrapping it around and making a joint on the center line. If this had been a clear finished part, uh, I would have been fussier about this. But we had just uh, learned earlier that it was going to get painted. And so the pressure was off in terms of making the carbon weave pretty. Um, so I just patched some pieces in and um, finished wetting out the inside skin and made sure it was all well saturated before starting to fit the core. Here's the core mostly in. Um, the side panels are hanging off of little foam blocks. You can see a couple of them that are five minute epoxy to the panels. Um, they just lip hang over the lip a little bit and help things stay so they don't slide down into the mold. Um, the center line core strip 
is just laying there and um, the ones at the back and front that I'm fitting and a little bit of fitting on the job. Um, but that all gets laid in. The compound curve areas um, are not cored because the curvature gives them enough stiffness, um, hopefully. So now the second skin is going in um, and just laying full panel across the whole thing. No slip joints. Um, just going to let the crimp in the fabric and the careful uh, pushing down make that go in, um, you know, fit around the edges of the foam core. And again, this is a very minimal amount of resin. Hopefully it'll be enough. Um, and hopefully the bleed stack doesn't pull off too much uh, and we get dry spots. But um, I have a pretty good sense of how much resin I want to be using. And I'm just uh, kind of eyeballing it in terms of the wet out. Rob's come to take a look. And um, there goes the dingo. So squeegee that all in and make sure it's nice and tight into all those radii where there should be slip joints but aren't. Um, and then I'll move on to the forwardmost piece, which will be tailored again on the center line. Um, this, the orientation of the fiber is roughly 090 to the, the axis of the vehicle. Uh, it makes everything simple and it's less likely to be warpy. Um, wetting out the foam here just with straight up resin. There's no filler in any of this resin. Um, ideally with heavy duty core and or thicker laminates. Um, the, re the core would be bedded in a, a slightly filled resin just to save a little bit of weight and uh, keep the resin from draining out. So here's the, the carbon up front. I'm going to bring that in and once I get it fit as much as possible, I'll cut that center line, but I want to leave extra fabric to play with. Um, so I'm kind of sleezing it in there before I cut it off. Um, and I think they'll end up being a patch. Those two sides will butt on the center line and there'll be a single um, patch that a couple inches wide that covers that joint. Now the other side working that in and the patch down the middle. We'll go over the whole thing with more resin. Um, again, hoping I have enough and at the same time trying not to get too much. It's pretty easy to wet out the 200 gram carbon and um, I know the bag stack, the bleeder, will uh, pull off some material. Probably I should have used a little more resin um, but I was trying very hard to bring it in as light as I could, um, and we'll see how it looks. So here goes the peel ply, um, laying in there in two pieces with a joint down the middle. Um, I, ideally, again, the, the peel ply, the breather would all be slip jointed, but here there are enough wrinkles in it that there's plenty of excess material, um, and it's doing this job by yourself um, under the pressure of all that resin um, it means I don't have much time so I tried to get this whole thing done in about an hour and a half and after all of those hours of sanding it seems kind of crazy to make the part in an hour and a half but um, just patching in the peel ply up front very quick and dirty with the peel ply fitting but um, Again, it won't matter that much, and um, not an awful lot of resin soaking into that peel ply. So here comes the release film down. Uh, these have been pre-stuck together with the breather. The breather in this case is the six ounce fiberglass cloth, um, which works nicely when you have very thin laminates. And there's a strip down the middle. Um, so I put this one layer down and I've got uh, release film and breather in, in one, um, one drop and patching it in trying to have minimum overlaps in the release film because if the whole if the two layers are overlapped um, there's no where for the resin to go and this is just a bit of infusion mesh probably wishful thinking that I'll get enough bleed to make it matter um, but that'll distribute vacuum now I'm bringing the bag around I'm glad that I've already got the sealant tape on it 
Uh, it's easy to lay everything out. Don't have to worry about making pleats in place. I uh, just spread the bag out, tack the corners, and work my way along. And down around the, the back end of it. I always try and keep the pleats symmetrical across the bag. So if I did it on, especially on a part like this that's symmetrical. Um, and put in the vacuum fitting, one on the front, one on the back. Um, trying to make sure we get enough flow, but at the same time keep those fittings out of the way of any potential wet resin. Uh, the pump we're using is a um, dry rotary vein, probably pulls about 25 inches of mercury, but uh, it's a pretty heavy duty one, it moves a lot of air. And this came down pretty quickly, and um, working the tacky tape around to make sure I've got no leaks, and hoping I get a little bit of resin bleeding into that. And here it is a couple days later, uh, peeling off the bag stack and having a look. Looks like I've got pretty nice surface peel ply there. A uh, few dry spots in the peel ply. But uh, for the most part it looks pretty solid and it uh, feels nice and, and uh, well consolidated. Here I'm looking at the back end where I'm going to have to patch in an additional piece of foam. Um, and I've pulled the peel ply off in the way of the single skin areas because in discussing this with the painters who are going to paint it, I uh, was concerned that it would be too floppy and they wouldn't be able to block out the surface. And so we came back and decided it was worth the wait to have a nice surface and have them not burn through the single layer of carbon on the outside skin. Um, and so added a single additional layer of six ounce carbon um, just hand laid and peel plied like this over those single skin areas. Uh, it would have been great to do this under the bag and in hindsight I probably should have bagged this anyway just as a second step but um, didn't do it. Better luck next time and we'll check it out.